talking about we've been wanting to see. This is, uh, can I fire your wine? This is the best night we've had lately <laughs> to see everybody here. I'd like to welcome everyone. Um, I know we have some special guests tonight. Um, some students to be recognized, uh, Eastern Randolph, Randland baseball team, all the staff, coaches, and parents, and all, we welcome you here. Uh, we have a special guest in the house tonight, Senator Dave Craven. He represents our area, Randolph County, and uh, part of Gilbert County. Uh, we appreciate you being here tonight. He said he was going to come tonight, and uh, we've had a lot of discussion lately and phone calls and texts back and forth with him, and we appreciate you're taking time to do that and listen to us, and we do appreciate it very much. Uh, so at this time, I would ask that you would join me in a moment of silence, please. Thank you. At this time, would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. and things that have occurred in the last month or so. Uh, number one, I want to talk about the local budget. I want to say a big thank you to our county commissioners and our board members for their work with the local budget and give you some figures regarding the local budget. Our current expense, begin with, the county commissioners approved everything we asked for. Every part of our local budget was, was approved by the county commissioners this year. So we, uh, our current expense side, we received $1,024,000. Last year, that amount was $551,000, which was very, it was a great result, being that COVID was uh, putting a hurt on a lot of people's budgets, but our county commissioners kept pushing us forward. So our current expense funding has increased over the last eight years, counting next year as year eight, by $4,365,007. What's equally important about that is last year this time, when I was talking about the increase over seven years, the average per year in current expense funding was $477,286.71. Take another year out and you have an extra year into the visor and our average per year has increased by almost $70,000 to $545,625.87. What does this money do? It allowed us to increase the local substance for every employee in our school system, including doing extra for our bus drivers, our teacher assistants, our custodians, and our clerical. Um, another side of the house with the budget is called uh, capital outlay. Now we get capital outlay money for any per student or per student a lot. That's regular capital outlay, but a lot of the public does not realize that starting in 1415, our county commissioners uh, created another funding stream at capital outlay, and it was to fund what is called the nine-year facility upgrade repair fund. And so the first year of 1450, they were able to give us 250,000 of our request to 736,000. The next year they put 500,000 more in that fund. And we went for several years and asked for an increase. And in uh, the last three years, we've had an increase by another 200,000. So we have a special capital outlay line item from $950,000 that occurs every year. That's been used for roofs, windows, uh, stadium seats. We've replaced the wood bleachers at Eastern Randolph. Uh, we replaced the lights at Trinity High School, the wood bleachers at Trinity High School. We completely redid the stadium at Southwestern Randolph High School. We put softball lights at Trinity High School and several other projects. But without this extra money, we would not have been able to do that. So I just want to take a moment and say a big thank you to our county commissioners and to the board members up here because this doesn't work in every school system this way. And it works because there's a relationship between the elected officials who are representing the Randolph County School System being our Board of Education members and the relationship they have with our county commissioners. It is a wonderful relationship and um, you know I feel sorry for any superintendent who doesn't have a situation of that nature because uh, working with them is just like working with our board. So I thought uh, those numbers need to be shared tonight, Mr. Cook. 
uh, regarding our budget. That was a great result. The budget was approved on June 21. A couple other things I want to note. Um, Books a Million will be offered, will be holding July 25 through August 22 a book drive to uh, collect books for our school system. And Tim Moody will uh, be hitting that up for our school system. He'll be our point of contact. That's Books a Million in Asheboro. So this is another example of the great partnership we have with uh, businesses throughout the community in Randolph County. And finally, another exciting event that's coming on August 8th. At 2 o'clock, we will do the ribbon cutting for the new Trinity Middle School. The school is absolutely beautiful. It's the only, only the second uh, version of this school design that's been built in North Carolina. The other one, if you want to see what it will look like in the end, you can ride by it now because it's almost done. But if you look up Dixon Middle School, uh, Trinity Middle School matches Dixon Middle School and Oslo County Schools. Uh, we're, our school's a little bit smaller because they built theirs to possibly be a high school one day. But I want to say a big thank you to the uh, J.M. Thompson Construction Company and Smith Center Architect Firm for their great work. I also want to say a big thank you to Larry Chilton, uh, Dale Brinkley, Marty Trotter who uh, retired back in November, and also Steve Myers who took over as the project manager in November when uh, Mr. Trotter was retired. Um, they've done a great job with this project. Randy Wilson's been involved. Uh, it has been a very smooth project, and we're coming to the end, and looking forward to August 8th for the ribbon cutting for this wonderful, beautiful facility. So, Mr. Cook, board members, this concludes my comments. Thank you, Dr. Ganey. Um, at this time, I would uh, ask for me to motion to approve the uh, minutes for the June 21st, 2021, and the June 29th, 2021 meeting. I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, this time, um, this is really exciting, isn't it, Tim? We're it back. Is. Yeah. This is what we all look forward to, recognitions. And uh, until right. COVID came along, we were used to having our boardroom full like this. And sometimes they were lying outside at every meeting. And uh, <coughs> we certainly miss that. I mean, uh, it's nice to look out front and see all these young people and to look at our future, you know. I got so used to looking both ways here and I mean it's a pretty good people, but you know I'm ready to see some different <laughs> different folks. But anyway, <coughs> you know, we're going to move the recognitions. Thank you. All right. All right, so thank you, Mr. Cook. Good evening to you and to all the board members, Dr. Gain and all our guests, and it is indeed nice to have a group recognized tonight. And we have some impressive athletic accomplishments to recognize. We are excited to honor a state championship team in baseball and a state champion individual in track and field. We're going to begin uh, by asking the state champion around the high school baseball players and coaches if you would all come to the front. We're about to squeeze you in up here and get a picture of you. And our board has got a certificate to uh, Head coach Jake Smith. The high school, the Roundman High School 2021 varsity baseball team won the North Carolina High School Athletic Association 2A state championship on June 26, 2021. The Tigers defeated Rutherford, Jones, Findale Central in a Bedford Free Series at Burlington Athletic Stadium to capture the title as the second state championship in baseball for Randleman High School, which has reached the fourth round or better in the playoffs every year since 2010. This type of team finished the season with a 19-2 record and outscored their opponents collectively over the course of the season by a combined total, I want you to listen to this number, a combined total of 209 runs to 20. Uh, that's what you call domination. In the playoffs, the Tigers defeated Reedsville, Southwest Onslow. They beat a first fight team that was previously undefeated. They defeated East Blake, and then they won two out of three against RS Central to capture uh, the championship. It's also worth noting, this is another rarity in the championship game, starting pitcher Ryan White pitched a no-hitter. Can it get any better than a no-hitter in a state championship game? I think that's what they call pitching the game of your life in the biggest stage for a high school baseball team. So congratulations, Coach Smith, and all you players for an amazing job. All right, you guys can have a 
out to Steve real quick. We've got, we've got one other to recognize here. All right, next we want to recognize, like I said, an individual state champion. I'm going to ask Dalton and Laura of Eastern Randolph High School. If you would come forward to be recognized for winning the 2A state championship in the men's high school. Our board is presenting a prize to RCSS certificate to Donovan. He competed in the North Carolina High School Athletic Association 2021 2A state track and field championship in Greensboro on the weekend of June 25th and 26th. In winning the state title in the high jump, Donovan achieved a personal best and set a school record of six feet and eight inches. In order to advance to the state championship event, he competed in the regional competition on June 19th in Franklinton, North Carolina, where he finished first with a jump of six feet and four inches. And I also just learned a moment ago, he also finished in first place in the regionals in the triple jump. So that's yet another rarity to be regional champion in two different events. Um, this is uh, a great accomplishment. Uh, Donovan's coach at Eastern Randolph is Neil McNair. So great accomplishment. Congratulations. Um, uh, job well done. You know, you could have stole the show if you jumped those first two tables. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was just I was pulling for him. <laughs> I was just about to ask if he could display some jump. I was going to put him and Fred in a challenge match, but I didn't. <laughs> I really like to know can, can you knock a basketball? Okay. Uh, that concludes our uh, time of recognition. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly welcome to stay for the balance of the meeting. Thank you all for coming. Don't have to do it. Don't have to do it. Yes, sir. How are you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. on it, um, start of school dates, and also some events like Teacher of the Year event and ret the retirement uh, banquet, but the Teacher of the Year event comes up early, remember it's going to be September 2nd, we're going to do that in the fall, starting with this year. Yeah, well, I did not put the uh, cruise that's going to be the uh, board retreat that Mr. Cook's been asking about for a couple weeks now. I don't know who's going to pay for the board retreat. I guess that's why we have a senator here, right? We, we, we might have to take him for supervision, I guess. So, at any rate, I have I have three gifts to, or four gifts tonight to present. Uh, the first gift um, is Trinity Elementary School. And it's from the Petty Family Foundation in the amount of $500. And it's to be used for 
uh, the school's playground, and I accepted this gift on the 24th of June. Again, this comes as a information item because of the uh, value of being $5,000 or less per board policy 8220. The second gift came to Trinity Elementary School as well on the 24th from Archdale Drug, and you have $50 to be used to upgrade the school's playground. I accepted this gift on the 24th, and I bring that as an information item tonight due to its value of $5,000 or less. And then there is a third gift to Trinity Elementary School in the amount of $250 from Triad Cosmetic Dentistry. And I accepted this gift on the 24th of June as well and bring it to you tonight as an information item due to its value of being $5,000 or less per board policy 8220. The final gift I'd like to present tonight uh, is one that was to the school, I'm presenting this as a gift to the school system on the 12th of July. David Cross, Director of Career Technical Education, made me aware that there had been a donation uh, from Austin Wood with Outdoor Supply in, in Archdale of 725 pot carrying planters, and each one of those is valued at $3 a piece, so the total value of this gift is $2,175. And uh, when we learned of this potential gift, David talked to the different leaders of the agricultural programs throughout the school system, and these this donation is going to be used by the agricultural program at Province Grove High School, Randleman Middle School, Southwestern Randolph Middle School and UR Ridge 612. I accepted this gift on the 12th of uh, July. And again, since the total value is $5,000 or less, I bring it to you tonight as an information item. So board members, those are four more gifts given to the Randolph County School System. And appreciate everybody who uh, provided those gifts, uh, three for Trinity Elementary School and then one for the school system agricultural program. So uh, these are those four gifts on the agenda. Okay, thank you. Uh, I better clear the cruise thing up real quick because somebody might think I was serious. But uh, what happens, Dr. Ganey uh, sends um, his plans out, you know, signing places he's doing, things he's doing for the next two weeks to the board. And um, I think you were saying something about appreciate all we do or something. And I guess I twisted it up. Well, maybe you ought to throw in a board, board cruise or something on that if you really like us. But anyway. It was a joke. <laughs> unless, unless he's paying for it. <laughs> Moving on to the operations with Ms. Ashworth. Good evening, board members. Tonight I bring to you the School and Health Advisory Council which is called Shack Report that's presented to you annually every year. I'd like to go over a few of the accomplishments for the 2021 school year. Now, each school submitted a safe schools plan and you're ready to committed to close the session early school year. Also want to brag on our custodians who stay focused on keeping our school buildings clean and inviting. It was a challenging year as you know. Um, they always worked really, really hard but really set that to play with the COVID-19 restrictions um, guidelines to meet the needs of our buildings. Um, our certified school nurses are available to our students and work really hard this year to maintain health records, store those, um, and work in compliance with our state and federal regulations. The school nutrition program provides fresh made entrees if you haven't tried them you should they're delicious with fresh fruits and vegetables in our in our cafeterias daily and again another group that really went over and beyond to ensure that our students were fed throughout the 2021 school year um, they provided that free breakfast and free lunch to all of our students and it's my understanding that free breakfast and lunch also provided be provided in the 21-22 school year Moving on to our uh, professional development, we provided drug awareness and prevention in our elementary and middle school, high school levels through things like Red Ribbon Week. Again, although it's a challenging year, uh, it didn't slow our staff down, so we find creative ways, including virtually, to provide those lessons to our students. We continue to be focused on our advanced bullying prevention programs in the grades K through 9. And for staff, as we've shared in June, um, we've provided youth mental health first aid training, resiliency training, as well as those seven modules for SEL, Castle SEL for campus. So as we looked at our accomplishments for 2021, uh, the SHAC team is charged with setting goals for the 21-22 school year. We also kept in mind the school age initiative mental health plan that was presented to you in June as we made these goals. So our goals for the 21-22 school, school year is to continue to focus on our mental and social health, emotional health needs for our students and our staff, continue to increase the importance of wellness for our students and staff, improve the communication and collaboration between our school and our mental health agencies, and then refocus again on our resources for drug awareness and prevention, including these cigarettes and babies. You know, we've 
done that for a while. Last year was a unique year, and we just want to make sure we bring that back to the forefront with us going back five days a week and having all of our students on campus. So those are our goals for the 21 and 22 school year. Any questions? Okay, at this time I need a motion to approve the consent items. Yes, uh, the contract for speech therapy, that one is for translation of forms. There'll be another one you'll see next month that'll be services for speech services with children. So that is a renewal and the uh, we've been using the uh, athletic trainers since I think 14-15 we started with when Rick Dawes took over as county athletic director uh, we had some pretty lengthy discussions and he discovered the need and found that access to that resource and so it's been building over time Mr. Cutler. Originally when we got into the athletic trainer contract uh, Randolph Health didn't have enough trainers and Mr. Sink you may remember you for a year or two y'all continued on with a first responder and I think uh, Randleman High School had a uh, um, Joe um, Mullins. Mullins worked kind of volunteer, even though he was a licensed trainer. And um, and we were able to. It took time for Randolph Health to uh, get enough individuals in the in the in their network of trainers to cover all of our schools. But it's worked very well for us. I, um, it's a safety issue we have to have for. You know, we were talking about that today. Uh, the requirement is rest of the matches and football games and football practices. But uh, if you go on our high school campuses, you see these trainers are at everything. They're, they cover all sports. So, but yes, in short answer to your question, that's longer than you had. It, they both are renewal contracts. We we have the uh, Kilpatrick. We've had it every year, haven't we, uh, Kathy? I can't, I can't remember a year when we have. Any more questions? Todd, it, it goes up with our current operating budget. It will change every year based on it, based on revenues and ADM. Yeah, per, it's a per people divisor is the number of cities. Okay, I need a motion to approve the consent items. Motion, have a second. Second. Okay, have a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, at this time we're going to move to the action items and uh, let's start with um, this idea. We're going to skip the first one talking about our COVID 19 plans for next year and we'll come back to that. We'll do that one last. Good evening, Chairman Cook and board members. Tonight I bring to you um, a grant to the Randolph County School System. The Randolph County School System received a digital learning initiative planning grant from the North Carolina State Board of Education in the amount of $41,560. The grant was received on July the 8th, 2021 and designed to provide funding to expand the maker spaces and train a team of Makerspace ambassadors to support Makerspaces in high school media systems. Jenny Creek, Scarlett Allman, and Trent Cox, um, who I have the pleasure of working with, are responsible for submitting this grant and for writing this grant. This grant is being presented to you for the final approval for acceptance per board policy 8220 a copy of the grant award letter and grant application with the details of the grant is attached for your reference. Any questions, comments? Do you have a comment? Would you know where you're at? Okay, yeah. Appreciate you guys and um, the team for doing that. I know I never tried to write a grant, but I've heard it. <laughs> it's a pretty big deal. But um, not a whole lot of people got those either. Right. I mean, that's seven. 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 That's a big deal. We certainly appreciate that and the hard work you did. You should be proud. 
So at this time, I'll ask for a motion to approve the Digital Learning Initiative Planning Grant from the North Carolina State Board of Education in the amount of $44,560. Okay, $41,560. I have a second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. At this time, we will ask for Mr. Brinkley to come up. Hey, Jail, since you're the technology guy, will we just get Mr. Burgess's phone number? And we want to make, we'll, we'll send him a call every day at yeah. two times, all right? I don't You could practice your jump and jump on the table or something <laughs> when it's time to switch. <clears throat> okay, um, so you're at what, 125? Is that the last number on virtual? So. We're at 122 and we have 15 pending that if uh, we're just doing the, uh, I see Tammy in the back and Kathy, we have uh, 15 that we are waiting to do the paperwork on. And uh, so I feel like we're in good shape, getting ready to finalize the uh, deal for the uh, instructional curriculum. And uh, the facility's coming along. Uh, we are, okay, Kathy, what is it? Steel, navy blue, and uh, hold on, I've got the colors. We have school colors too, folks. We have school colors. So um, lime green, lime green. And uh, we are in the process of hiring staff, and so uh, any questions about the color scheme, uh, please direct them to Justine Carter, the principal. <laughs> well, that should be, it's, getting, it's, it's wrapping up, the, the work area is being, uh, the electrical work is being done. Uh, furniture is, is, we brought furniture over from Braxton Graven School. Uh, it's coming along quite nicely. We, we're in the process of finalizing a sign for the facility, and. Uh, Dale has applied for an address for the school, um, so uh, it's coming along. But yes, we're we're going to be right at 1:30 probably when we open, if not a little higher. So, okay, we need a motion to approve the 2021-2022 bail schedule for the virtual academy at Randolph. Okay, got a tie. Who wants to jump out? Second. All right. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We now have a bell schedule. Mr. Cook, before we move to the next item, I want to say something else because this was curious to me for several weeks as, as Kathy and Tammy and, and now uh, Ms. Carter are working on this, uh, on, on this school. I was wondering where the enrollment was falling and uh, last count is we have up 73 uh, Right above 70 elementary students and almost 50 middle school students. So the interest is at both levels, whether it be K-5 or 6A. That's substantial interest, in my opinion, from, from the community. Uh, so who knows where this program will go, but i um, very excited to see that we're going to be getting right at 1.30 as we open the doors. Um, 
Okay, um, that's true. Virtual doors. We're going to be opening the door. We'll build doors for staff. That's all right. <laughs> no, you, I'm going off script. You got me to thinking just then. You worry about it when I go off script. But I'm thinking last year being a COVID year, I mean, as bad as it was, and we had a lot of new people step into positions in, the, in our school system. I mean, it's like Kathy Dale, Larry, I mean, all over the place when you look through back in technology. Um, and I, I don't even see how you guys had time to write a grant for one thing with all uh, everything you was doing. But I know we first talked about the virtual, you guys. It just seems like it was only a couple of weeks ago. And, and how far or how everybody's doing together. And um, I mean, everyone stepped into some pretty big shoes to fill. And, uh, and everybody's filled those shoes well. And, 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 and I just wanted to take a minute to say that thank you forever. I mean, I can't, and you guys jumping into the new school and, and, and hadn't missed a beat. And Kathy, I mean, I just can't say enough, but I just want you to know we do appreciate everything. And uh, I, I know sometimes the only thing you can say is thanks, but yeah, thanks. <laughs> okay. Um, at this time, we will um, see, I lost track of myself now. <laughs> The new, um, okay, we're going to stick with you, right? Okay. So the next action item for operations is a recommendation to approve a pay increase to classify staff members in the school nutrition department. The school nutrition department is proposing an increase of one dollar per hour for each classified member in the department. As a result, this recommendation will include the following positions in the school nutrition department. School nutrition assistant, Assistant uh, manager, manager of school nutrition and central services support staff. This salary increase will be effective August 1, 2021. The total amount of cost of this increase will be 229000 including matching FICA and retirement. This cost will be funded solely by the school nutrition budget. Uh, the East pay adjustment will allow the school nutrition department to better recruit for current vacant positions and remain competitive. So, board members, uh, we've been watching this for a while. And, um, you know, Kelly uh, Green has been a tremendous leader of this of this program. And um, one of the things we've worked, you know, when we've talked about different uh, situations with salary is, you know, we got into COVID. All of a sudden, you heard a lot out there about do this bonus and that bonus. We've, we've taken a different approach. We wanted to do whatever we could do for people where it was permanent and stayed with them. And so um, this is uh, very similar to, um, you know, I, I work with Todd now. Uh, this We just finished our eighth year together and I have a lot of uh, confidence in Todd. And Todd came in back in September, I guess it was, when we started talking about local supplements. And he said, it's time. It's time. We've got an opportunity here. We can make this work. And we had a very similar conversation with uh, um, Child Nutrition. Child Nutrition is its own program. If you remember, Child Nutrition pays indirect costs to the school system, which is a large budget item in our local, but it's in our, um, I guess it's in our revenue uh, stream. It's uh, north of, is it still north of 500,000, Todd? Is it? What was it last year? Sure. It's pretty. It's a pretty large. But they, like all other federal programs, they pay indirect costs through operator programs. They are self-sufficient. If you get into a school system, if you see a school system where the child nutrition program is not self-sufficient on child nutrition money, then there's a problem, and it rarely clears itself up. But um, um, ours is, has a history of being in very good shape, and so just. I wanted to give you a little background and, and on this. Uh, they have managed their funds very well, and um, we have some tremendous employees, just like we do all over the system. And from time to time, we have opportunities to do extra for employees, and this is one that we felt was necessary to bring to the board. Thank you guys for making that happen, Kelly. Um, I think that's well deserved, and um, those people worked hard last year. I mean, they are—they didn't—they um, 
they didn't work from home a lot. They were on the job and making sure kids were fed and meals were out there. And they did a really great job. And uh, sometimes those people kind of go unnoticed, you know, but you're part of a team that makes makes everything work. And we'll certainly appreciate all they do. And I'm glad this is out there for them. And this time I would ask for a motion to approve the pay increase for the classified staff members in the school nutritional department. Could I have a second, please? Second. All right. I have a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thanks. Motion's unanimous. Thank you, board members. Thank you, Dale. All right. At this time, we will move back up to uh, Dr. Ganey. We're going to discuss the COVID plans for the upcoming school year. Okay, board members, I just want to share I want to share some information as we close out July and we head into um, August and into the 21-22 school year. Um, I think everybody is eager to get back to what we do school as before March 14, 2020. And um, I want to share some stuff that I shared with the principals the other day. And um, I sent them a text this afternoon and asked them to read an email because I added two, uh, four items, I think it was, to a list that I read to them the other day in the principals meeting uh, because I did not have them on my list. But I want to just share some things and, you know, before we just completely open back up, I think we need to maintain some standards so we can make what our goal is of five days of in-person instruction for all students from the start. Um, I'm not going to tell you that every one of these items is going to make everybody happy. But I am going to tell you that, uh, as I told the principals the other day, I don't know where we would have been if we hadn't started school last year. I was absolutely lost from March 14 to the end of uh, March 14, 2020, to the end of the 1920 year. I would ride in my office in the morning. In that ride, it's not very far from my house. I would realize there were no students in school. And as that spring went on, there were very few staff members in the school. Because if you remember, we started encouraging people to work from home as the numbers increased. So I'm so proud of what we did last year. I'm so proud of the staff members because many staff members I know were nervous, but they came back for kids. That's our, that's our core business. So we have to move forward. We have to, in my opinion. And I will work with you any way that's needed and with health officials any way that's needed. But I want to share some things that are, I feel like uh, need to be in place as we move forward. And the moving forward is five days a week in-person instruction. That's the moving forward goal. So, let's go read to you a couple things that, uh, or point out a couple things that are important as we move forward, in my opinion, in the management of the school system. Contact tracing will remain in place just like we ended the 2021 school year. The same rules will be in place. Now, remember, when we got to the end of the year, the rules were somewhat different than they were in January and March. We, we, we were able to focus on where the the positive case was and who was closest to it instead of we got away from the whole classroom going away or going home for a quarantine or the whole bus. So I think we have to start where we ended unless something causes us to increase the standards back the other way. Lunch visits by parents. You know, I want the parents back. If you, if you knew anything about me as a principal, uh, I wanted the parents on the campus. And, you know, I, well, I wasn't an elementary principal, but I wanted them on the middle school campus, and I wanted them on the high school campus. I wanted them to see what we were doing, the good and the bad, because I felt that was the only way to gain trust of the community. But I don't think we're ready to bring the parents back in the lunchroom, especially you know, at the elementary level. So, and, and these things are, as I said to the principals, these are until further notice. 
That doesn't mean June 2022. Further notice could be something could change tomorrow. We could go in a different direction, but until further notice. Another item that I think we need to start with is we need to start with meeting the children at the front door of the school and getting them in their classrooms. Maybe we'll get back somewhat to where we were back in the day where some schools might have allowed kids to be walked down the hall by their parents. Some schools didn't before the COVID-19 pandemic. But we need to start there and keep the focus on, if you remember back in March of 2020, on the 13th of March 2020, we had a special call principal meeting. I think that might have been the first one that we had had in my seven years at that point here. And we talked about trying to have school. We eliminated a lot of the, the visits, the guest speakers and all. We wanted to focus on students and teachers and having school. And I think in some ways we need to look back at that and, and see where we can go from here. So um, I hope any parent listening hears when I say, we want you back on our campus as much as we can. But our number one goal is five days a week for all our kids. And want to be careful there. Um, I know the elementary teachers. I never taught elementary school. I've never been an elementary school principal. But the elementary teachers in this school system have clearly opened their doors and in their classrooms let me come in and read and, and visit with them. And I see what they do. I'm not, I no way would claim to be the master of elementary education that they are. So I understand how important it is to have the nice rug and have the upholstered furniture and the cloth curtains and balances and maybe an occasional stuffed animal or, or a puppet or some of that nature. But for now, we're going to have to hold off on bringing that back in. We've got to make sure we're in the best position to keep our classrooms clean and make it good. You know, and, and, and I think somebody, I got an email one day last year, early on last year, what do you mean by we're going to make it run at it? Well, that's what I meant. We're going to make a run at it. We're going to try to get school going and, and to see how far we can go into the 2021 school year. Well, we went pretty far. We got to the end with school in session. So now I think our challenge is how far can we get with five days a week with everybody there? Guest speakers, we'll eventually get back to guest speakers, but right now we're not going to have those in classrooms and camp on campuses. Assemblies, yes, we ended the year with assemblies. And things went well. Let's start out the year without those. See where we may get at the end of the first quarter or at the end of the semester when those recognition simply start or even at the end of the first athletic season in the fall when people will start having some of the banquets. Um, field trips, um, I know that that people uh, would like to start field trips right off the bat. I think field trips will return, but let's don't start the school year. Let's get going without those early on. Cafeteria, we're going back to the cafeteria to eat lunch. Now, as I have Kelly and staff members here, I've learned, I try to learn y'all's business as we go through the time together as a school system. There will be an option, Kelly, at for breakfast to be down the hall or in the cafeteria, and that's more, that's not a COVID issue, that's a convenience issue of what the school decides to do. Is that correct, Kelly? So I, I called that the other day. She's not going to take away the bringing the breakfast to the classroom, but um, we are going back to the cafeteria for lunches and breakfast if needed. In-person meetings for staff, whether it be professional learning community meetings or planning meetings, uh, will resume faculty meetings. Uh, I mentioned our goal will be to return students five days a week for in-person instruction. Middle school and high school athletics and other extracurricular activities. We're going to start off with our normal schedule. There have been no discussion at the state level, so unless we learn something different, um, by this time last year, uh, and, and my role was a, on the Board of Directors Athletic Association, we had met several times. We've not had any meetings this summer. The coaching clinic is, is uh, taking place right now in Greensboro as well. We will honor the capacity limits of gyms and auditoriums according to state standards. So. Let me just make sure I didn't miss anything for anybody listening, because uh, I did miss one coming down and went back. Contact tracing, we will start the year like we ended the year with contact tracing rules. Can, we, can you explain that? Well, we'll deal with symptoms. When a child may have symptoms, we'll deal with the quarantine of the child, uh, if a child's positive or a staff member, or a staff member having symptoms. Well, that's the contact tracing is what's going on. Is it symptoms, is it an exposure? 
or is it a positive? Will a positive rule for me use at the end? I guess one comment as far as uh, someone in, in a classroom, whether it be a student or staff members, uh, as far as how we determine, as far as exposure, as far as who is going to We're going to stay with the latest rules we use at the end. Remember the last probably month or so, we were doing the area right around instead of the whole room, instead of the whole bus. Yes, we'll be looking at that unless unless things were to turn another way and we had to do something different. But right now, we don't intend to do the way we were had to do early on. We're gonna we're gonna go to the progress we made throughout the year with the COVID nineteen rules and parameters. What we're gonna do, so that should help. Let's do COVID. You know, I, I, unless we're required to have one, I don't really see a need to because as time went on, I don't know that that was. I don't think that was. Uh, it went out and that wasn't used as time went on. We got, everybody was moving kids out as quickly as they could. I mean, we'll have to play that one by ear, but I don't, I don't see a need for it right now. And what you say before the passing numbers for gyms and high school athletics? Middle school, high school athletics and extracurricular activities uh, will follow a normal schedule. And I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll forward the email to y'all tonight uh, when I go back to my office that has uh, these on my sent to the principals. But, let me run through it, Mr. Cutler, make sure I didn't miss one, because I want to make sure I got these out publicly tonight. Contact tracing, as we ended last year, will be in place, those rules. Talking about the who's affected by symptoms or, or um, uh, exposure to a positive. No lunch visits by parents at schools. That's number two. Number three, parents will have a drop-off. We'll have to drop off children at the front door of schools. We won't have them in the schools. Uh, we can bring parents to activities after hours like ball games and all, but right now for the school day, the pick up and drop off, we're going to do how we did last year. No rugs, carpet, poster furniture, cloth, curtains, balances, window treatments in classrooms. That's the fourth item. No stuffed animals and puppets in classrooms. That's number five. Guest speakers will not be permitted on school campuses, and all of this is until further notice. School assemblies will not be permitted. Cafeterias will be used for lunch, and I should say breakfast if a school decides. No field trips. In-person meetings can occur on school campuses, like faculty meetings, uh, professional learning community meetings, or other planning meetings. All students, this is one uh, I, I pointed out in the front end, but this was in my master list. All students will return to school for in-person instruction for five days per week at the same time. Last, second to last one, middle school and high school athletics and other extracurricular activities will follow normal schedules. We just had a request, Kathy, the other day about a band competition, and we said absolutely, that's just like a ball game. That's, that's the competition in, in that uh, part of the uh, extracurricular program, so yes, we would allow. And last one, capacity limits on gyms and auditoriums will be adhered to according to state standards. If you remember, when we ended the school year, we, had, we were still at 50% on the gyms and auditoriums. So uh, hopefully that'll change as time goes. But I uh, just wanted to get these out. Um, I'm gonna give it about another week or so and, and see what comes out of the Safe Schools Toolkit that's supposed to be released for revision early this week. Um, I wanna see some things that develop at the state level and at some point these will be formalized in a memo and obviously I'll share that with the office when I'll see you have it. But I wanted to make sure this was out in the discussion uh, or presented tonight uh, for anyone listening. So um, any questions about those before I move to a couple other items about COVID-19? I do about contract, uh, contact tracing. Um, you know, we'll be doing the person in front and the size of the positive case. How about if the people around them are vaccinated? Well, if they're vaccinated, uh, that we find from what we hear. And there's another little piece out there, Mr. Cutler, that I've heard in the last week, and I want to see some more come out in this toolkit. I've also heard that um, if you have on a cloth face covering and you're not vaccinated, you're not going to be impacted by the positive. Now, I can't remember if I heard that from the CDC or if it's going, I can't, I heard that out of the governor's office the other day. So, um, you know, there's some things. The contact tracing, when I talk about that, I'm, I'm talking about it's, we have to identify, we're going to identify who's affected by a positive, uh, we're going, and what do we do with the quarantine of that 
uh, individual, the positive and the children affected or the staff affected, and then what do we do with quarantine and removal for a while from school of a, a person with symptoms? You know, in the end, we, we got, we, the household rule went away probably about March, I guess it was. Remember, if someone had symptoms, that popped up in what, September, and that was a real game changer. When the household rule popped up, and if someone in your house had symptoms, you all of a sudden were quarantined too. That was a real game changer in the number of people quarantined for a long part of the year. Then about, was it March it went that the household rule went away? It was, that helped a lot. And then the piece you're talking about, Mr. Cutler, really helped. When we were able to go to the, the area around uh, the positive, you know, who was directly exposed versus, um, but, you know, it helped a lot, but it also, we had watched numbers for a while that when numbers were beginning to go down some, that helped us. But to, and to be clear, all of that is governed by the state and local health departments, and we don't have much control, and they have been changing the rules pretty frequently over the last 15 months, so. Is it seven days or 10 now? Yeah, I had to look back. We'll have to, yeah, we, that, haven't, that's a little we haven't. We'll have to look back where we were at the end. I had to look back. I hadn't looked at those rules um, as far as the, all the day counts in a while. We did 10 for exposure positive because we just you saw some emails in the past past week. And uh, when, what was it for symptoms? It never changed from 14, did it? We're still doing 10 for the recommendation. But it was, it was 10. What was the 14? The, the, Ten, 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 ten all the way across. We do every night. Yes, yes. We haven't. We we haven't talked to any facilities yet. We probably. I don't. I don't. We talk. We're gonna see what happens a little bit in the next couple of weeks, whether we take floors or not. Or not. Yes. They change their guidance on appointment. Yeah. Once a day was fine. Yeah. And see, we basically. You have it every night. It's thorough. The build's thoroughly cleaned, and and so we we haven't really. We, we're gonna wait and see what happens in the next couple of weeks on the facility. Any any facility actions we take. Um, right now, we've not made any definitive decisions about facilities. This is nuances, but the gym capacities and things. I know that at times become an issue with parents and things. Can we try to look into that and maybe not just let the home team have ever seen? Because, you know, especially for the seniors, it become an issue. Sometimes we ask people get kind of hostile, but you know, we have time to kind of look at it, try to get all the schools. Well, and we've got, little, we, we, well, we've got a lot of it all starting out. One of the things that helped us was when we went to 50% versus, remember, we started out 25, and that, that was that was when it was really tough, but we'll, we'll continue to look at that. And, you know, we did some things for soccer, but when the soccer started, I guess it was the beginning of, or end of February, beginning of February. When did soccer begin in February? We were able to do some things there because we, back when there was some requirements on the stadiums. So uh, we'll look at it. We just encourage people with hospitality to go home ways. Now, the uh, North Carolina Hospital Athletic Association had a stance on any of this yet as far as the uh, athletic return to normal response? We've not had any meetings of saying by now we had, you know, this time last year. We were thrilled that we were doing workouts. When we started back on June 15, um, we met multiple times about schedule. I've heard nothing. There's not been any. Yeah, I mean, the, the last time I was around staff really was the state baseball championships, and there's been nothing, Mr. Cover, that led me to believe we we're going to have a difference in uh, direction for this year unless something starts up in the next month. You know, we're right on the heels of, you know, we're, we're days from fall sports starting. So. Did, did we finish the year last year uh, taking temperatures and asking the questions if we do? We took all that up. Well, was that the beginning of May? It went up somewhere. We we uh, yeah we, we stopped that. So that went away. So um, yeah. Um, what about And that's why we're kind of right now. You get the questions you're asking or. We don't, we're not ready to jump out there right now and start marking floors and start doing all the 
facility. Now, yes, I, we haven't said anything about facilities, but well, I, I take that back. We did say, you know, the rugs, the carpet, and all that. Let's hold off on that. And make sure we can get um, get going and put ourselves in the best way, to, the best position to clean classrooms. But um, I know that's not popular. I know it's not popular. And How about we'll get back to. That's the next thing I want to talk about. But I'll, I'll make sure I answer all your questions first. Anything else? Um, anything else from this list? And like I say, there'll be more of a formal memo to principals. And if you remember last year, we put a lot of things out. Tim and I put a lot of, a lot of things out trying to Make sure everybody knew what was going on, and, and um, uh, we will. This part about the no, no parents in the building. We'll work on that again, and make sure we give plenty of support to the schools, so um, principals aren't dealing with that. Um, that's a school system decision, not an individual principal decision. So, and I want to say a big. Here's what I also want to say. I talked to people over last year, and I said, you know, last year we did a video, Tim. You may remember. And I said, I'm not, this isn't 31 principals to deal with this. This is ours right now. So Tim and I did a video, and I think we were at Southwest Middle maybe or in the summer, and we, we announced that, and I never had a complaint about that. I, I just think, you know, maybe I missed a complaint somewhere, but I never had a single complaint. And I credit our parents. They wanted our kids back in school, and, and they helped us with the things we had in place to make it work. And, and so... Uh, they were very great teammates as always with us. Our staff and our students and our parents really worked hard together um, to keep us going. So I appreciate that. So anything else on these items before I get to the next? You have to keep them out of the office. They want to bring something in for their kids or they still going to go to the office. And we, we, did, we did not let, I don't, to our knowledge, no one was really coming in. But um, they were met, being met at front doors and at school. So, yes, they, yeah. Other than I don't know if the high schools, the high schools had the buzzers on. Or they had the buzzers on the high schools. No. All right. Um, Let me just make a couple other comments and we're going to move to another item that I know that has had a lot of attention. I'm getting a lot of phone calls, a lot of emails, but um, let me just say this. We don't know what's going to occur in the next 10 months when we start this school year, and I want to assure you that we're going to be as flexible as we can within the parameters that are offered by the, or provided by the health officials and by the state. So just know that um, there's some things that may require more flexibility uh, to keep school going than we're anticipating right now. But we'll deal with situations individually the best we can. A big question out there right now is cloth face coverings and wearing cloth face coverings. So at this time, I would like to give you a document and um, let you look at it and we can have some discussion about it. And just for anybody watching, this document is entitled Resolution Making Mask Optional in Randolph County Board of Education Policy. So board members, you have in front of you a document um, regarding uh, the, the topic of cloth face coverings slash mask and what uh, the expectation will be. Um, 
And this um, this resolution is not something that was written by was written by our lawyer, our attorney, Elizabeth, right? You drew this up. Yes, I, I and uh, it she uh, she drew this up for us to have tonight. And um, she had one a little bit longer. She shortened it down, condensed it a little bit. But um, I just want you to know this is not a copy of uh, another county or anybody else. This was our attorney, which should, that would probably be our best direction for us and help keep us out of trouble, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Does anybody have any comments that you've read down that maybe something you think needs to be added, taken out? Or? Last paragraph, at least uh, anybody listening online. Yes. Everybody listening online. Yeah, I had a question. Yeah, I had a question on the third uh, section. section. Uh, whereas the requirement to wear a mask is only one of many prevention strategies that has been and will be employed by the Randolph County Board of Education to prevent the spread of COVID 19. Is this just saying that? So what that's saying is that there are a lot of different prevention strategies. Dr. Gaines brought over some of those tonight. And it is, so the masks in the past were one of many strategies that the board has used. And so the many strategies is that the board will continue to use many strategies, even if it chooses not to use masks. It does read like it says the requirement to wear a mask will be employed by the rental council. Yeah. So I think that was when I spread that, but then when I read you know the last one down below it, it's almost saying that we're we're being resolved of everything that was written beforehand to uh, I, I I think we should just read it out loud or something. Yeah, if you if you could revise that third okay. paragraph yeah. to make it more clear. Yeah. How about the requirement to wear a mask is only one of many prevention strategies that has been. Yeah, just take yeah. out and will, will be yeah, employed. Will be employed yeah. by yeah. Us. Or has been employed yeah. by us. It's almost like it's against what we're saying at the end. Yeah, it's contradicting. It sounds a little bit contradictory. Yeah, I can see how you could read it that way. Since we don't have a law degree, that's what we do. But they have been meeting for five. Gary, I'm going to use the Bible.
certain that I did that the last paragraph for sure. Would you like to read the whole? I think it should be. I think it's going to end with me. Yeah, people listening. I just think we need to fix that. Okay. So we're going to read the uh, resolution making mass optional under the our four plus. Do you? Uh, Okay, um, whereas as of the date, Randolph County is not rated to have a critical rate of COVID-19 community spread according to the county alert system developed by the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services, which evaluates the county's COVID-19 case counts, percent positives, and hospital occupancy. And whereas the requirement that masks be worn indoors in North Carolina was rescinded for all public settings, save a few exceptions by executive order of the governor of North Carolina, number 220, effective June 11, 2021. And whereas the requirement to wear a mask is only one of many prevention strategies that has been employed by the Randolph County Board of Education to prevent the spread of COVID-19. And whereas on July 9, 2021, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, issued new guidance for COVID-19 prevention in K-12 schools, which indicates that the mask requirement can be lifted for fully vaccinated people in most settings, including schools. And whereas the CDC directs localities to make decisions on COVID-19 prevention efforts in light of local conditions, and whereas promoting in-person learning and focusing the attention on educators, of educators on instruction and not enforcement of mask mandates are critical to the education and health of the children of Randolph County. And whereas given current obstacles, distinguishing between vaccinated and unvaccinated students and staff raises enforcement and privacy concerns for school staff. And whereas the Randolph County Board of Education believes strongly in the rights of individuals to make decisions regarding their own personal health, and now, there, now therefore be it resolved that the Randolph County Board of Education has no individual mask mandate. Failure to wear a mask on the property of the Randolph County Board of Education or a school in the Randolph County school system will not be considered a violation of board policy or school rules. All students, staff, and community members are encouraged to make their own decisions respecting their personal health and to choose whether to wear a mask. Any harassment, discrimination, bullying, or intimidation based on any person's decision to wear or not wear a mask will not be tolerated. Adopted by the Randolph County Board of Education on this 19th day of July, 2021. Dr. Danny, I appreciate that. Just to be clear, um, you know, there's no vaccine for children under 12. Yes. We're still mask optional. This resolution is making it mask optional for kids, children under 12. Yes. Just to be sure. For anybody, everybody. Everybody, yeah. yeah. I know. I, yeah, everybody. Has to make sure. I strongly encourage people if you want to wear a mask, wear your mask. That's that's absolutely. If you've been vaccinated and you still feel you need to wear it, I'd wear it. Um, I have one more thing. Uh, on the seventh uh, down, it says, whereas given current obstacles, distinguishing between vaccinated and unvaccinated students and staff raises enforcement and privacy concerns, shouldn't it also include students? You only have school staff. Well, the school staff are the ones who are enforcing and having to. So we should also extend the privacy toward our students, right? Yeah, you can put four schools down. All those involved? <laughs> take four schools to the staff out. I read that as concerns for staff inquiring. Yeah. For trying to it's a, so the, the, I think the spirit of this is mm -hmm. that the issue is for school staff to have to engage in the Yeah, 
props here. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's intended that the privacy issues are for everybody. Okay. I think yeah. you could get the same meaning if you took out for schools staff. It's similar meaning, so. That's what you want. And I guess as we go into this, like we've talked about a lot of other things tonight, we don't know what this year holds. And um, hopefully, we don't have to go back on something. But, you know, <laughs> not saying that, but, but you never know where we're going. We've got current legislation that deals with, you know, just what we're talking about right here with the uh, optional mask. And um, you never know what the governor's going to want to do. Never, you just never know. To, because he's got to do something because the executive order runs out this month. Well, we have to move forward. Yeah. We can't. We, we can't keep going. That's, that's, yeah. that's what we need. To, that's what we need to know tonight. And um, so, what are we going? Are we going? We made the change on the third section. Take out and will be. Is there anything else the board desires to change in this uh, resolution? Well, I think the thing, Mr. Saint, was. What that aims back as is um, if staff ask students for other staff about your vaccination status, it's to protect, there's the problem. The staff that has to enforce it with the students or staff uh, could be, um, have issues with the enforcement or um, allegations of uh, privacy concerns. Yeah, we're going to say the staff don't have to be the vaccination police. That's where the concerns from there. Yeah. So you want to board want to leave it? Are you good with that? Sure. Sure. I think we're good. Yeah, we're good. They are too. Yeah. All right. What's um? So um, more questions? Yeah. The only question I have, I, I think it's something to come through. You know, the very first part of it says we're not you know, critical whatever that is today, uh, critical rate of code. Uh, that first part does not, uh, is not requiring us in any of as if we move to a certain percentage, a certain number, a certain measure that we have to uh, automatically put a mask on or anything like that. No, that we still have to. We have to adopt the new resolution. Okay, all right. That paragraph is, is, is just a description problem. of where we are okay. and why, Elizabeth, correct if I'm wrong, but um, very inaccurate here. Why would this board even be considering this? Well, there's some feed, there's some some information what's going on now in that first paragraph. Mr. Uh, Burgess, I think, describes that. Yeah. Okay. That's that's the way I read it. So Beverly, just for the public record, uh, the document we entered into the minutes is one with that third section taken out and we'll go. Let's see where I'm where they took that out at. Okay. So board members, when Beverly does the uh, Elizabeth question for you, when Elizabeth when Beverly does the minutes, should she include this document with a strike through or just clean up the document? Yeah, unless anybody else has any questions, I'd like to make a motion to adopt uh, the resolution making masks optional for the Randolph County Board of Education policy as presented. Okay. All right. We have a motion. We have a second. All those in favor, raise your hand. Say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimous. The mask will now be optional in Randolph County. Starting, uh, I guess, tomorrow, correct? I mean, if I sign this thing tonight, um, any staff members come to work tomorrow, or um, am I right? I, you don't want to wear the mask? There's not a start date, so I would say. Yeah, but there's no start date that's effective. It's all ready for it. All right, so starting tomorrow, I'm going to sign it. Thanks. You can't, you can't sign that. You got to put your new one. She's going to redo it real quick. I'll sign it. 
So that means those attending summer school. All right. Okay. Okay. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. I mean, um, I appreciate you guys taking a stand. And um, actually, uh, I know some of us called Senator Craven. I appreciate you uh, uh, slapping us on the wrist and uh, <laughs> guiding us a little bit that I had to do this too. And um, anyway, it's a big day for Randolph County Schools. We, uh, we were one of the first school systems to step out last year and um, go to school. And um, when a lot of systems didn't, and we made a decision tonight that not a lot of school systems have made. And um, I like the fact that sport gets out in front of things. Thank you, guys. And we also appreciate the feedback we get from people. Yeah, we have a lot of parent, parents coming in, staff. Uh, I know I've gotten a lot of emails, I'm sure everyone has. And, um, you know, you're not going to make everybody happy, but. Like I said, it's in your hands. You have a choice, um, and I mean that's just you know whether you choose to get the vaccine or not. That's your choice. Actually, I and someone asked me today, and I'm gonna just tell the story real, real quick. What was the inspiration for me to get the vaccine? And um, I deal in the business where there's a lot of oh, you want to know this? <laughs> no, I deal with a lot of elderly people in the business I'm in, and I got to customers and people coming by and then they're 80, 82, 85, 86, all those, and um, they were all getting the vaccine. And um, not one of them's dead yet. They were doing good. I mean, you know, very minor side effects and all that. And I was saying, well, you know what? If they go out and get it and uh, taking a chance, that inspired me to get it. So, uh, you know what? I didn't have any side effects either. It is a nice sense of relief when you go out, and uh, whether you choose to or not, it's a choice. It's a choice. For me, it was a good feeling when I walked out, and I felt like I didn't have to stay away from people, you know, this much. But anyway, that's your choice, not mine. That's the reason I did it. Okay, so um, are we ready to? Um, <coughs> I got a, a, one question. Kind of circling back to um, the first part before the resolution. Uh, the all right. You said we're, we're finishing up the way we, we or sorry, we're starting the way we finished up, you know, last year, All right? So for teachers who have a uh, have a student that is sent uh, home for either quarantine or because of a positive case, <clears throat> so I'm assuming day one, or so we're not uh, having remote learning in in there. So what are we doing for the, the what is going to be done for the ten days that that kid is? Um, Quarantine. What's expected of the teacher? Well, um, I guess that's that's something we'll have to discuss more. We'll have to come up with a more definitive plan and look at it more, probably like an absence um, in, in the past. But the same token, we're going to have to make sure they're provided instruction in some way um, because and, and with the use of Canvas. Uh, we're a year down the road from using Canvas, so hopefully we're in a better position, but we won't be able to, you know, the, the, what I know people were wondering is, the reason we started the Virtual Academy Randolph was to prevent the teacher teaching both ways. Right. But same token, just like prior to the pandemic, uh, when the child was out, we had to provide instruction, so we'll have to find a way to provide instruction. It may not be exactly like we did last year with the camera and all, but um, the other side of it is, I'm not going to get in the way of a teacher who may choose to do that, too. So sure. we'll have to we we'll have to make a game plan for that. Um, that might be somewhat different. The campus is going to be a big help now because we're a year down the road. Okay. So you you do. I don't want to put words in your mouth, <laughs> but you you don't. It sounds like you don't foresee us actually requiring a teacher to be teaching remotely and in person at the same time. At this point, I don't, we've not made that plan to do. Um, you know, hopefully the majority of what went on last year with that has been moved to um, Virtual Academy Randolph. But we will, you know, the, thing, the issue will be the teacher just because the child is, is uh, 
put on quarantine and not just uh, not provide instruction. So uh, that's going to be a piece as well. You know, prior to COVID-19, we had children who were sick for windows of time, and we, we addressed that very successfully, so we'll have to use those strategies as well. But I think a big player in this now, and Kathy, I may be missing something here, but a big player here is Canvas now. Canvas is, is here, and Canvas will help us, and we didn't have Canvas uh, used to the extent it was used prior to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. This time I move that the Randolph County Board of Education will enter into closed session pursuant to North Carolina General Statute to preserve the attorney client privilege to discuss confidential personnel matters protected by North Carolina General Statute and to discuss confidential student matters if needed protected by FERPA. Okay, we have a motion to have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 So we're now in closed session.
Need a motion to uh, approve the administrative transfers? So moved. Have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Need a motion to approve the administrative appointments? Have a second? All second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, need a motion to approve the uh, classified personnel report? So moved. Have a second? All right. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Need a motion to approve the certified personnel report. I move. Have a second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Need a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Yeah, okay. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. We are.